Let's get started. It's great to see everybody in church. Let's worship God together. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
that thing, whatever that barrier or that issue or that problem you have in your life, there's no way you're going to be able to do it on your own. I want to ask you to lift your hand right now. You want God to do a miracle to help you. Amen. God sees your hands. Amen. He's really going to help you. Amen. Whatever aspect of your uh, Christian walk. Amen. Let's pray for Pastor Greg uh, and Lisa Mitchell, Pastor Jesse and Bethany Morales. Let's lift up uh, Pastor Diego with Kelly Galvan and uh, Stephen Emily Cassio. Let's also remember uh, the Northeast leaders uh, in Cape Cod, Pastor Paul Nunde Campbell, Chip and Lori Ganeer. Let's remember the uh, Suspanskis and the Kings in uh, Jacksonville. Let's pray also for my pastor, Pastor Keith and Carrie Sullivan, all that God is doing there, wonderful results of the preaching of the gospel. Let's pray that their families are uh, blessed there financially, amen, their uh, children and their grandchildren and all that God is doing there with their new converts, amen, blessing the flow, amen, because they say blessing flows downhill, amen. Yeah. Let's pray for our mother, our mother church, amen. And watch what God can do in your life. Amen. God is going to pass that down to us. Amen. What a wonderful fellowship we belong to. Perhaps uh, you have a need in your life. Amen. Uh, and uh, you need God to move. I have a couple requests here. Uh, a young lady by the name of Mummy and her twins needs uh, a miracle. She needs uh, you to move uh, powerfully. And uh, we're going to pray for her situation. I mean, she's in the hospital right now. She had like a nervous breakdown, a mental condition. Amen. So let's pray for uh, a miracle there in that situation. Can we? Jasmine Rodriguez. And let's also pray for Brian Young. Joshua Cole. Hallelujah. Miracles. Amen. To the backslider. Let's pray for Cedric Smith. He needs direction in his life. And uh, Jennifer and Robbie, hallelujah. Jasmine Rosario and the kids. And let's pray for Chris Brock's family at the loss of Chris's life. Amen. Let's pray for comfort to them and uh, salvation to be wrought in their hearts. Amen. To uh, fulfill all that God has in their lives. Diane and Sam. Amen. Let's go ahead and believe God for miracles tonight. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we thank you, God, for what you're about to do tonight, God. We're asking you to send down the Holy Ghost, God, your blessing to flow, God, answer prayers. Move upon all these uh, requests, God, spoken and unspoken, God, we pray for mommy and her twins, God, we pray for this family situation, God, a breakthrough there, Lord, God, a deliverance, God, I pray a miracle in that family situation, God. We're asking you, God, for the miraculous. We're pressing in for what you can accomplish, Lord God, on our own. Uh, I, we can only do so much, God, but let your spirit come down and touch uh, every family here, Lord God. Uh, anoint this sermon tonight, God. Bring about great changes and miracles. Save the lost. Uh, 
move in Pittsburgh this weekend, Lord God, I pray for your hand upon us, traveling mercies, Lord God, what you can accomplish, Lord God, what you can do, God, let your name be glorified tonight, we pray that you bless all these here tonight, and those that are missing tonight, God, we pray for your hand uh, to be upon them, keep them safely, God, and uh, be blessed and glorified tonight. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. We need you, Lord God. We need your spirit in this place. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's take a minute to greet one another and make everybody feel welcome. You don't answer all my questions, but you hear me when I speak. You don't keep my heart from breaking, but when it does, you weep with me. You're so close that I can feel you when I've lost the words to pray. And though my eyes have never seen I've seen enough to say I know that you are good I know that you are kind I know that you are so much more Than what I leave behind I know that I am loved I know that I am saved even in the fire to live is Christ, to die is gain. I know that you are good. I don't understand. Is this a family reunion or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. We are so happy that you're here tonight. And in Grease Potter's house, welcome to you here. We have uh, some announcements for the local congregation. Uh, and that is, uh, you guys know about uh, June 12th, this Saturday, we're going to be traveling to Pittsburgh. If you'd like to join us, we're going to go labor for Roger Williams, hand out some flyers and uh, get that thing going. We're going to have to leave probably around 8 o'clock, I imagine, to make the 11 o'clock. I'll reach. Amen. We also uh, are uh, looking forward to uh, this month, June 20th through the 24th, is the Chris Hart Revival in our mother church. And then we're going to be going the 20th through the 24th. Uh, we'll be going Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Obviously, we'll be here on Sunday and Wednesday. Amen. Marriage Retreat, September 17th, Niagara River Resorts. Many of you are interested in that, and that's awesome. to have a special treat. My, my pastor, who I got saved under, is going to be preaching for us on the 21st of July. Amen. That's going to be exciting. Pray that's going to be a Wednesday night. Oh, okay. When did you say? Yeah. July 21st. July 21st. Amen. Looking forward to that thoroughly. We're also planning on going to conference in July. Amen. That's right around the corner. If you haven't made your reservations yet, amen, there's still a little bit of time. There's going to be some amazing 
uh, preachers there, Paul Stevens, uh, Sergei Golubev, uh, Greg Mitchell, uh, Jesse Morales is preaching there. Some of my favorite preachers, amen. And, uh, if you can't make the conference, you can't travel to Alaska, Arizona, then you see it online. All the services will be live streamed in uh, real time, but three hours later, I think, right? So it'll be starting on uh, that Monday night. Amen. The date is July 12th through the 16th. Amen. Praise God. If there's no further announcements, I mean, I'd like to take up our offering. I mean, this is from Deuteronomy 8, verses 6 to 10. I've entitled this, Just Bless the Lord. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks and waters and fountains and springs that flow out of the valleys and the hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack Nothing. A land whose stones are iron out of those hills you can dig copper. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Amen. God is providing for our lives. Amen. And our proper response should be to worship him with an offering. Amen. We're going to take our offering this evening. Amen. If the usher can come forward, amen. Uh, I'm going to encourage you to give and pay your tithes and offerings, amen. As a result of what good God has given you, amen, things that you and I, we don't deserve, amen. He's done wonderful things for us, and we need to always be grateful, always be thankful for all that he's done for us. And let's bless the Lord tonight with an offering, amen. Can you bless us? Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to All that you've done for us, always to care for us and meet our needs. We thank you for this opportunity to put money back into this ministry. We ask that you bless it for your purposes and for bringing people, bringing our harvest, Lord. We ask in your name. Amen. Lord bless you. Thank you so much for your giving. You can click the link online if you'd like to make a donation, pay your tithes, or offerings besides. Amen. There is you. some health issues and I just want to say thank you Jesus for waking up every morning with more strength Amen Amen, Amen. Praise God. 
Anybody else want to give a little word? Brother David? Yeah, I was going, I'm starting to go through the final audits of my new novel, and I went through again today, and I ended up stopping and just worshiping the Lord five, six, seven times for something that was written that was way beyond what I'm capable of. I mean, the Lord just, just anoints, and I read this thing, and I say, my God, I know that came from my fingers, but <laughs> it never passed my brain or something. I don't know what it was, but it's, it's clearly the Lord. It's not me, and it's really me. Amen. Very good. We have one minute left. Anybody else? <laughs> yeah, what happens in a minute? It's going to be awesome. Well, I'll say that um, he got me through the last week of watching our little mobile home get destroyed that meant the world to me. Ooh. And I was able to watch it get towed away today because a friend of mine up there took picture. And to me, it was going to be a hard thing to do, and I feel that he helped through this. Yeah. Yeah, so I feel like his, yeah, his hand was on my Aww. shoulders getting me through it. Awesome. Yes. Amen. Thank you for sharing that tonight. Amen. If you'd like to turn your Bibles with me to 1 Peter 3, we're going to read verses 1 through 6. So my latest stint, I've uh, taken on a job as a long-term sub. I'm a swings teacher now. And I've always had to, to, you know, teach band and so on and so forth. But with a student, and there's always something that you have to balance the correction with praise. And other, otherwise, kids will just give up. And that's the same for you and me, I believe. Sometimes everything is perfect in their experience. For this uh, last month and a half, you know, you see the child, the way that they're sitting or standing, their posture, the way that they're holding their bow uh, or their string, uh, where they're holding their finger, their pitch accuracy, tempo, and note reading. Other times, there are specific issues that need to be addressed for the uh, growing, budding musicians. One student I've been working with, she's been playing violin since she was three years old. And she just played a solo today in the concert, which was pretty cool. I really was like, wow, this is great. So but one thing that I had to address with her is the position of her hand is like off by maybe a millimeter. And so when she's playing, the notes go a little bit sharp. So we've been addressing that issue and uh, trying to get her to play. She was playing some very uh, sophisticated dotted rhythms and uh, something very complicated today. So it's just this one area of her life that we're, we're, we have to address and to make her go from very, very, very good to excellent. So today we'll be addressing an area in the Christian's life, focusing on the hidden person of the heart, what's really going on inside. We're gonna look at holy women tonight from 1 Peter 3, verses one through six. I'm going to read out of the old King James here. Wives, likewise, be submission to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they, without a word, may be won by the conduct of their wives. When they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear, do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging of the hair, wearing gold, putting on fine apparel, uh, rather let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and a quiet spirit which is very precious in the sight of God for in this manner in former times the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves being submissive to their own husbands as Sarah was as she obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are if you do good and are not afraid with any terror. This is entitled Holy Women Tonight. So, uh, men, don't just, you know, <laughs> just just uh, hold on to your britches for a second because I'm going to address the women in here uh, and the wives. Amen. We have to first, all of us need to find out what is truly precious. You know, we need to learn how to think and to decide how we're going to behave. And scriptures, Peter's talking here, which is very precious in the sight of God. 
It's not just good. It's not just acceptable, but it's precious. And that brings to mind like jewelry or fine gold, something precious, something very beautiful. Thinking and acting with the right spirit is something of a great value to God. Other people may not esteem what God esteems, and that really doesn't matter. Can anybody say amen? Mm -hmm. What he says is to be uh, paid attention to. That's the priority. We want to, amen, to uh, let God look at our lives and uh, see us as uh, precious. Amen. The way we're behaving, the way we're living, the way we're thinking and speaking. Amen. Pleasing God should be our number one motivator in life. What he sees us doing is on his radar. You're on the blip somewhere. Doot. Doot. Oh, you're moving. Doot. Okay, and so you're on the radar. God is watching it, so it's going to be very difficult to hide from his sight. Amen. We need to discover what he is looking for and pray for our spirit to change. Amen. So secondly, our great need this evening, amen, is to figure out how to act. Amen. We need to treasure what God treasures and then figure out how to act, how to treat one another. Amen. How to think about other people's needs. And speaking words that edify others. Amen. We know that the mother, the mother is very good at most of this stuff, laying down her life for her children, sacrificing while the husband is laying in bed. It's three in the morning and the baby screaming the top of his lungs. You know, the husband's just a lazy slob, isn't he? The mother is really conditioned to sacrifice something incredible. So we're going to look at, amen, how to honor God, amen, through being, uh, you know, what God wants us to be. And if we have to make some adjustments tonight, amen, then God will be pleased with you. Hallelujah. So let's talk to the women tonight and the mothers and the wives, amen, soon to be women, 16-year-old, 18-year-old, hallelujah. <laughs> Is there anybody else in here? Find the right place. Praise God. To the woman and wives, he doesn't say a quiet mouth. Okay? He doesn't say, you know, that she shouldn't be talking. She's supposed to be a wallflower. Do you know what I'm talking about? You ever heard that before? Just a, a, something, you know, a, a, a pretty little uh, decoration or something. She should never say anything. Okay? So, speaking is still very important to God. I mean, he doesn't say a quiet mouth is something precious. You know, the doctors and the nurses and the scientists have noted that uh, when you look at a baby inside of its mother's womb, the boy and the girl act different. The boys seem to be flailing their arms and legs around, and the girl, the females, are moving their mouths. <laughs> this is a valid scientific fact. You can look it up. But their mouth is moving in overtime. My wife, as do many other women and girls, they have the gift of gab. They know how to move that muscle, man. It's something amazing. So maybe speech has never been a problem for you. And everything you say is like a bouquet of roses whenever it comes out of your mouth. Anybody in here like that? All the time, right? <laughs> no. That'll be a different sermon, okay? Don't crucify me tonight. Huh. Complaining or speaking unbelief, you know, that's something we're not going to get into right now. But to him or her to whom much is given, much is required. Much is required. Much is required or much is expected. So, ladies, you have this gift that I don't have. You can hear me stumbling and looking for the right word in my mind, but you have a gift. Amen. And God has uh, given this gift to you. Amen. And you are a tremendous smith at it. You are, know how to pick the right words. Amen. And so you have to be very careful with your words because to him much is given, much is expected. Amen. There's a great responsibility for them to speak much and for you to speak well. 
there's an effective power that's attached to the words that you choose as a mother or as a wife or as a daughter, perhaps. Words that you choose, amen, that can have a certain power to it, a certain thing behind there's a spirit that's attached to the words that you speak amen all of us even the men in here we need to be careful with our words uh, uh, James says to be slow to speak and then James 1 19 so then my beloved brethren let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak slow to wrath for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God Proverbs 15.4, gentle words bring life and health, and a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. Proverbs 16, verse 24, kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul, and healthy for the body. Proverbs 18, a person's words can be life-giving water. Words of true wisdom are refreshing as a bubbling brook. John 6, verse 63, Jesus says, It is the spirit that gives life, and the flesh produces nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. So each and every one of us in here, we are all called to speak and speak life to others. Hallelujah. There's an anointed speech that you and I can have. That means it's not like, you know, you're pounding or you're scraping or you're stabbing. There's an anointing. There's a healing value to it, a quality to it. Amen. Special words that are crafted by a, a mother or a wife. Amen. It can have a deep impact on others' lives. And people are listening to you speak, Mom. As uh, your husband is listening to you speak, wife. She can speak words and sentences that are full of wisdom and even prophetic at times. This is not in my notes, but some of you remember um, what's David's first wife's name? Abigail? Yeah, Abigail. Abigail knew her husband was a scoundrel, Nabal. Okay? And so David sends uh, his uh, his men to get a little bit of bread and some wine for the uh, you know the workers that are out in the field protecting the sheep, uh, protecting Nabal's sheep, and uh, so Nabal hears about it and he says, "Who is David?" You know, there's many uh, slaves that have uh, ran away from their master, so he's mocking David. David hears about it. David's going to go there and destroy everything. And get her revenge. But Abigail, with her crafting of words, she meets him before he comes to destroy Nabal. And she says, we know that, you know, you know, my husband is a scoundrel. Amen. And his words and his actions are, you know, I'm so sorry. So she just comes in and she says, you are going to be the next king of Israel. And so she prophesies about him. And her words are crafted from heaven. He says... You know what? You did a good job because I was about to annihilate Nabal. So she spares him. She spares her husband. He has a heart attack later when he hears about uh, hears about it as he should. Scoundrel. But her words came from heaven, and they were used, Amen, to produce much good and much life. Amen. That one was for free tonight. We all need to speak life. Amen. A great healing can come from the words that you speak as a wife or a mother or a daughter even. Amen. Proverbs 25, 11, A word that is fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. One of my favorite scriptures. So the words that you use, amen, they're powerful. And can I give a little bit of advice? And some of you know what I'm talking about, but you have to like review what you're about to say. Some people have no filter. This goes for men too, but there's no decision-making thing. The words just keep coming out of your mouth 
and you're like possessed with the devil, <laughs> right? And you say things and you're like, it's like not even you and can be very harmful. But if you would be slow to speak and like review them in your mind, maybe they could flash across the screen so that you can look at them, think about it, and just not be so quick. Because if they're crafted, if they're words of a, uh, you know, certain value to them, they can be very powerful and have a healing quality to them. Amen. We need to look secondly at uh, the promise that God gives us that if we invest on the inside, that is an incorruptible beauty. That is the spirit that you have, that you carry with you when you walk in the door, when you walk in the room. Amen. There's something that you bring to this church even. And when you go to your job or whatever, people know you have a spirit. Amen. And uh, the scripture here is talking about a gentle spirit. Amen. Or a quiet spirit. This is pleasing to God. The kind of spirit that makes you feel comfortable. I remember uh, growing up and uh, my girlfriend's uh, mom was Italian and Whenever we would go there, she'd be like, Monza, come on, eat, you're too skinny. <laughs> and she would make me feel so welcome there, you know, just do anything you want to, lay on the couch, relax. Mi casa, tu casa. Remember Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? E, Papa, nobody likes a skinny Santa. <laughs> they make you feel good when you go there to their house. That kind of spirit makes you feel relaxed. It's not hyper and... Um, you know, overbearing, the kind of spirit that is uh, not indirect or vague when they say things. Or there's a weird spirit. They leave you guessing what they're talking about or what they're meaning. You, you feel comfortable. You're just relaxed. It's the kind of spirit, I think, that is a quiet spirit, is a gentle spirit, one that is filled with the Holy Spirit, the kind of spirit that is pleasing to God. Amen. I'd like to start my sermon now um, with my third point. <laughs> Praise God. Is everybody okay so far? Yeah, right. I don't preach these all the time, do I? <laughs> and then I'm going to close with adorn your spirit. 1 Peter 3, verses 3 through 4. Do not let your adornment be merely outward. The arranging of the hair, you know, wearing of gold or putting on fine apparel. So let me... Bring the balance here. He's not opposed to you looking nice, you know, combing your hair, dragging a comb through your hair and putting on some nice clothes and um, putting on some makeup, ladies. Can anybody say amen? amen. Oh, amen. <laughs> There's no problem with that. If the bar needs painting, oh, paint it. <laughs> go ahead and paint it. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's pretty funny, isn't it? We're not going to be religious in here. Right. No way. We're, we're, not, we're not going to be overly concerned with the, the outward. Amen. Of course, the inside. But, you know, take care of yourself and make yourself presentable. And all these things is very good. Amen. Dress nice, wear jewelry, or, you know, present yourself. It's all good. But this is not the priority. Right. The focus tonight is on the inward parts. Mostly God... Uh, is is wanting us to be concerned about who we are on the inside, amen. The world doesn't care about that. The world's not concerned with that, amen. If you're on a TikTok or you're sending somebody a picture of yourself, you always, you pick a filter. You know what I'm saying? You're so concerned about the way that you look, but really, God cares about what's going on inside your heart. Amen. The focus is on the inward parts. So, ladies, when you pray, say, God, what is precious to you? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to behave? Yeah. He wants you to uh, also have a good self-image of yourself, too. The way that you look at who you are. He doesn't want you to be condemned and to be always questioning the way you look. You know, you're perfect with God. Amen? How do you think of other people also? And how do you think of God? What is your 
uh, overarching and overruling thought process throughout the day? Are you thinking about God? How, God, how do you want me to do this? How do you want me to think of you? How, how do you want, and you need to help me here. Amen. This will all help us to glorify God. When we pray, it gives us a love for other people, an ability to accept others. And if we accept others, then we see them for who they are and we want to minister to them. We want to help them. We want to be a blessing to them. Serving them and helping them to know that your God through your spirit. That's how people are going to uh, be affected by your testimony, who you are, by the, the way that you carry yourself. And they're going to learn who God is through your spirit. Amen. So there's an inward adornment. Let's look shortly at the outward adornment. An adornment is generally an accessory or an ornament worn to enhance the beauty or status of the wearer. They are often worn to embellish, enhance, or distinguish the wearer and to define cultural, social, religious status within a specific community. When worn to show an economic status, the items are either rare or prohibitively expensive to others. Do you know somebody likes to show off their diamonds? Yes, thank you for coming. <laughs> You see my earrings, hundred carat gold. It's an adornment. It's just, it's a status. They may be, you know, usually colorful and worn to attract attention. Yeah, you're gonna attract a burglar, maybe somebody to stalk you and rip that out of your ear. Adornments had a long history around the world from feathers to bone to modern accessories such as jewelry. Items of adornment are also used by warriors and other members of the military to show rank or achievement. We, ladies, have to focus on the hidden man, the inside of who you are. Amen. Your new you living inside of you. It looks just like you. Amen. She needs to be nurtured and growing. Amen. You need to focus on the inner man, the hidden man of the heart. And God will help you through prayer and Bible study to become that woman of God, that holy woman that we're talking about here tonight. Seeking God's face. How do you want me to live? Help me to change the areas if there are any areas that need changing. God, give me a quiet spirit. Amen. God wants to give you an ability to rest in his promises. Yeah. He's spoken to you at various points in your life. He's made promises to you, and you need to hold on to those. Remember those. This will quiet your spirit. This will help you to remember, amen, that when you're going through struggles and issues and trials, that God is with you, and you don't need to be freaking out. You can have a quiet spirit, amen, because God is with you. Yeah. Amen. When you have a quiet spirit, ladies, you can be trusting in God's plan. Maybe your husband's a bozo. I don't know. But you can trust in God. You can trust in what God has promised you, and you can, amen, regardless of what, you know, your family's doing, or your husband. You can have a quiet spirit and you say, God, you told me this. You spoke this to me. You promised me. And I believe you for it. And I'm going to hold on to it. And that will give you an ability to rest and trust God and have a quiet spirit. Amen. And in this part of your life, amen, you're going to be able to listen for guidance. You can't hear what God is trying to say to your life if you're you know, your spirit's not quiet. You're not listening. You're not waiting for God. God, give me some guidance here. Are you ready to be corrected? Sometimes God wants to speak to you specifically about things. And are you like, that's not me. And you say, you know, uh, you got the wrong lady. I'm not that, that person. But if you're ready for correction, if you're ready to be taught, man, you should welcome it. 
God, God wants to speak to you and, uh, and have a joy like, I can be better. I can be changed. I can have my uh, fruitfulness that I've desired. It can be given to me. God's going to help you. Amen. And, and you'll be able to uh, have God complete your development as a woman of God. And that's what you want. Lord, give me a gentle spirit. Amen. This is the prayer that you should have that would represent God's holiness. Thinking of it in a fashion that is gracious and merciful to everyone. I want to be like that so I can have a, a quality, a testimony to minister to other people and affect other people for your glory. Amen. Acting on the needs of others. If I need to sacrifice, then you go out of your way, amen, and you invest in that relationship, and it might hurt sometimes, but that is a sacrifice, and God is pleased with that kind of spirit. And speaking words, we talked about that a little bit. Those words are going to be able to heal people. They're going to be able to build other people up. They're going to be able to edify your sisters and your brothers in this church or in your family. Uh, maybe your husband, your words are powerful. They can help build up the hearer. Amen. And God will be glorified in closing. God is glorified when we become a blessing to other people. And in sacrificing to him, that's good. But, you know, treating others with care and compassion, that is spiritual. Amen. I know some ladies, they have this a gift to pray. And to pray, and God hears their prayers. I've heard words that were given to specific women from our mother church, and they said, you have a gift. God hears your prayers. And it was a specific thing for this one woman. Amen. And that goes for all of you. God is listening to your prayers. Amen. You can be a blessing, a spiritual, give other people a spiritual advantage by praying for them. Think about the powerful testimony of a woman's name. Amen. You might think of someone. I'm going to name a few of these here from the Bible as we're winding down here. And Sarah was the uh, wife of uh, her husband Abraham. It says here in the scripture that Sarah obeyed her husband without fear. Amen. Think about Priscilla. Amen. She served her husband. And this is from the book of Acts. And she risked her neck for the Apostle Paul. That's pretty hardcore. You might want to think about uh, the wife of Billy Graham. Yeah. Right? She sacrificed many years. Or Wayman Mitchell's wife, Nelda. Many years were sacrificed so that the husband could go out and preach and do what God called him to do. There's a sacrifice that wasn't in my notes. That's not in the Bible, but it's it's a fact. Amen. Mary, the mother of Jesus. What was her answer to the angel when the angel came down? She said, let it be according to your will. She was obedient to God. She said, I, I have no husband. Now. I don't, I'm not married. But she didn't say it like, this is a joke here. She was like, God, you know, what do you want me to do? If you want me to do this then, so be it. She had that humility. Amen. I don't know what's going to happen here. I don't know how this is going to work out. I'm not even married yet. But if you said I'm going to have a baby and I'm going to have the, the baby of God, then let that happen and use my life. She was obedient and God was glorified through her life. How about the name of Mary Magdalene and the other women who were there at Jesus' crucifixion? Amen. They were faithful. Amen. To be there. Mary Magdalene was there when Jesus was crucified. He was hanging naked there. That must have been embarrassing in a way. But she was there with the mother of um, Jesus, Mary the mother also. And uh, they were there at the crucifixion. And she happened to be the first one at the tomb. 
amen, for the resurrection, amen, to, with the spices, and I think another Mary went with her. And she just had faith, amen. God was glorified through her faith, amen, and she's mentioned in Scripture. There's a woman by the name of Dorcas in the book of Acts. She was raised from the dead. Amen. Acts 9, 36, at Joppa, there was a certain disciple. She's called the disciple. Her name's Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. And when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. And some of you know the rest of the story, but she was full of good works. She was always helping people. She was a good person doing charitable deeds. And uh, I believe it was Peter or Paul who heard her testimony, heard about her, and uh, he went and he prayed for her and he raised her from the dead. Her good works were mentioned. That's glorious. And God is glorified with good works. This woman was a disciple. Amen. Lydia, here's another one. This is the last one I have for you. Lydia was a seller of purple. She sold purple dye in Acts 16, verse 14. Now, a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Tyre, Thyatira, who worshiped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by God, by Paul, excuse me. And when she and her husband were baptized, she begged us, saying, if you have judged me faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my house. So she persuaded us. And then God is glorified through her life. Because he opened up her heart. Amen. And he went into her heart and took up residence there. Amen. She also says here, she's hospitable. She's like, why don't you come and stay at my house? And Paul took that up. Amen. This is the way we can glorify God. Let me close with a little LOL joke here uh, at the end. The following extract is from the diary of a New England woman who lived in the 18th century. We had roast pork for dinner, and the doctor who carved held up a rib on his fork and said, Here, ladies is what Mother Eve was made of. <laughs> yes, said Sister Patty. It is from very much the same kind of critter as the doctor is. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Holy women of God are precious. Amen. That should be your goal, ladies. Amen. Let God be glorified in your life with what you say, your quiet spirit. Amen. And the words that you speak. Amen. Can we close our eyes and bow our heads? Amen. I'm going to give you an opportunity. If there's anybody here, man or woman, you're not saved and uh, you have never been born again. You don't have a relationship with God because you are living in sin, you're enjoying sin, you're, that's all you know because you're a sinner, just like all of us. But the Bible says that only those who recognize that they are sinners and call on the name of Jesus will be saved. Amen. Jesus has died on the cross for your sins, that you can be made brand new. You can have a new life. You can have a, a new spirit. God wants to fill you with joy and gladness and give you a, a direction for your life. He wants to bless your life. He wants to change you from the inside. He really loves you and he's proved his love. And while you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you. And tonight you want to accept Jesus in your life. You've never been saved before. Or maybe you're actually, that means that you once walked faithfully with God, but certain things have uh, uh, pushed Jesus out of your heart. Other things have taken over, whether it's bitterness or unforgiveness, and you said, 
God, I don't have time for you anymore. I'm not interested in serving you. And you backslid. That means you've gone away from God and you're no longer in, in his will. My friend, today is the day of salvation for you. Now is the acceptable hour. And if you'll be honest, you do not have a relationship with God. He's calling your name tonight for you to be saved. Unsaved or backslidden. Amen. God got your number and he loves you. He wants to get things right tonight. Amen. But you're going to have to pray. You're going to have to accept uh, who you are, where you are, and what Jesus has done for you. You can be born again. You can get right with God tonight. With an uplifted hand, you'd like to pray. You say, Pastor, I am not right with God. I'm doing my own thing. I'm away from God. I want to get right with God. How many would there be tonight? You want to give your life back to Jesus. Amen. You're not saved. You want to pray and get, get on with your life. Get back to the plan, the destiny that God has put in your heart. Amen. And told you about several times. I have a plan of fruitfulness for you. Amen. And destiny. You would like to pray tonight because you know that God loves you and you are going to get right tonight. Give your life to Jesus, my friend. How many would there be with an uplifted hand or you could look up at me if you'd like to pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's uh, go ahead and pray with the people online. If you lifted your hand and you want to pray a sinner's prayer with me, why don't you repeat these words? If you believe it in your heart, God's going to save you. Amen. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I truly am sorry. I thank you for dying on the cross and paying the price for my sin with your own blood. I repent of my waywardness, my wicked thinking. Help me to change on the inside. Give me a new life, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I'd like to change the order of the service for anybody who's uh, interested in praying at the altar. I preached on holy women. Amen. God really loves you. And, uh, you know, it, what's precious in his sight is, amen, that you become holy. And, amen, we'd like to pray with you if you want to come to the altar. We're going to sing this song, Amazing Love, with our sister as she plays the piano and sings the song.
up and sing it. Saturday, hallelujah, thank everybody for coming, amen, Sunday morning is our uh, adult Sunday school at 10 o'clock, if you would like to join us at 10.30 is our morning worship, amen, if you're online or listening to the sermon, we are located in the Stonebridge Plaza, otherwise known as Toys R Us Plaza in Greece, New York, we'd love to have you and help you, and uh, we just pray that God blesses your life, amen, and that you guys have a great week. Praise God. Thank you for coming. Brother David, can you send us home? Yeah, we thank you, Lord, for being with us tonight and for the sure knowledge that you'll go with us as we go home. We ask that you touch us and open our eyes to see what you're doing around us so we can participate in what you're doing and help you bring in the final harvest, Lord. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You're dismissed. <laughs>